risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You need your hymnal, number 457, in order to turn and face the cross in procession. Please stand. Holy Spirit. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we might in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as an ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led them in your steadfast love, the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. And peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
let's pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please sit. The reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle is from the third chapter of Colossians. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Before we sing, it'll be part of a procession. All during Easter, the gospel will be read in procession to show the good news coming amongst us in the resurrection of our Lord. Remember to turn and face the gospel as it is read once again now with full voice. Please stand and sing. Holy God. 
gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb and behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please sit and sing. Hallelujah, our Lord God Almighty reigns. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In Christ's name, let me share especially with some newcomers that today's sermon message is the climax of our Lenten worship series on Wednesday nights, and then continuing last Sunday and Thursday and Friday, Places of the Passion. You can see the list of the places we journeyed on the back page of the bulletin. And today, of course, it ends, it begins at the empty tomb, the garden tomb, it is called. And our text is, again, from Matthew each time, the appointed gospel for today, Matthew chapter 28, in Christ's name. Please note in this account of Christ's resurrection, especially in Matthew, that it happens four times, if I can find them, for fear of him, the angel, the guards tremble and became like dead men. Later on, it mentions, the angel does to the women, do not be afraid. And yet, they go forth with fear and great joy. And then later, Jesus meets them and tells them, do not be afraid. Four times, fear. Fear, understandably, fear. The sermon materials that came with this series has a definition of fear. I, 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 I will use today, it's, it's not bad for practical purposes and spiritual purposes. Fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. The false evidence on the first Easter that G was that Jesus was dead and it was over and finished, a failure, all that he had proclaimed. And of course, for those who had followed him, that would provoke fear. There are all kinds of manifestations of fear, therefore, when you encounter a problem for which there seems to be no solution, you fear. When there is a threat and you realize your own powerlessness in the face of it, there, there is fear indeed. As we would stand before an almighty God as poor, miserable sinners, rightly so. There should be fear, but there is more to the message replacing fear with, with, with faith. Fear constantly whispers either run away, right? Or, or, or fight even more, the, the fight or flight instincts we have at the, the base of our spine. But faith points you to God's word. Indeed, in whatever personal situation you have today, as things go haywire in our society and world, and as you stand, kneel in fear before your God, the message is repeated over and over and over again in the Bible. It is the most prominent short message of the good news. Fear not. And even as you're Emotions get tied in pretzels and your brain races. This word 
calms your fears. Even in the face of what seems to be evidence-provoking fear, these materials point in an extended way to a piece of art maybe you know. It's called the Eisenheim Altar Piece. And it resides in France in a museum in the town where it originally was created around the time of Martin Luther. It's 500 years old. And you may know in the Renaissance and even afterwards they made these triptychs and other wonderful pieces of art as, as the fronts of their altars. This one was done for a monastery of St. Anthony. And the monks there operated a hospital. And that hospital specialized in treating skin diseases. And although it's hard to tell from this picture, you can Google it when you get home. Christ on the cross is depicted indeed with skin diseases and a pale, wan tone to his skin. And the others in the picture too, again, maybe you can't see from there, Mary, the mother of Jesus, She's watching her son die with fear. John the Baptist, although he had already died and gone to heaven, is pictured there too. He had proclaimed Jesus as the Lamb of God, and he's watching that be fulfilled as Jesus dies. But he proclaimed Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the midst of the greatest, deepest cause for fear, our sins upon Jesus on the cross, your disease of disobedience and estrangement from God, as Jesus carried that, fear gives way. The Eisenheim altarpiece has a series of doors. And normally it looks like this when you go to see it in the museum. You can actually see people behind it to, to, to understand the size. But when it is open, those images of disease, sin, the wrath of God disappear on Easter and a few other occasions. The glorious scenes of Christ's resurrection appear. Gone from his body is that pale greenish hue. The, the, the wounds are basically healed. Christ is risen. He has conquered all that would cause us to fear. But there's the reminder. Of course, after Jesus rose, we'll hear next week from John chapter 20. He still had the wounds from the cross in his hands and feet and side from the spear. And knowing full well here, you can't see it in that small picture. Those wounds still are evident in Jesus, but the artists displayed them with rubies, precious, precious gems. Jesus conquers our fears, your sin, your guilt, the things you can't handle, his disciples' rejection. His mother's grief. Anything that would cause us fear. And in a most precious way, he reminds, I am risen. Peace be with you. 
Five times in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus predicts his resurrection. And that means new life for you. Indeed, like a man, true story, named Grisha Siklenko. Grisha Siklenko, I think he was in the Ukraine. In 1960, he appeared one day in his town to the shock of his neighbors and friends. Everyone had thought, 1960, that Grisha Siklenko had died in World War II. Actually, what happened was the night they drafted people to go to war, he, he went home to where his mother had, had made a hiding place for him. And guess where? Under a manure pile. Now, he didn't stay in there for 18 years, but pretty close for 18 years his life was manure in the winter he almost froze to death in the summer especially with those fumes he almost suffocated finally in 1960 he could endure no more he figured he would take what he deserved and came walking back into the town his fears were groundless. The people were amazed to see him and the statute of limitations had run out on his crime of desertion. But, but fear does that. It, it moves us to, to hide in even more manure of our own sin and weakness as we confess our sins and come out. Our Savior is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We just said, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to give new life. As you go forth from the garden tomb this Easter, you go forth now to, to live free, free to obey, free to follow, free to share this message but free because the main message of Easter truly is, do not fear. Do not fear. Yes, there is a healthy fear of the Lord. But we live with a, a, a praise of the Lord. Again, we remember now that it's Easter. Praise in Hebrew is Hallel, and the Lord is the substituted word for God's name, Yahweh. One more time, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is risen from the dead, hallelujah, and amen. Having heard God's word, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand and speak. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified 
who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit as we share before our offering, our ministry minute, indeed, uh, some important announcements, none more important than welcome in the name of the risen Christ to all of you, and especially newcomers. We do have some even at this early hour. It is our pleasure to have you with us. Uh, you can sign our guest book behind the second wall there. Also use the uh, worship card that is in the uh, uh, pew rack to share any contact information you, you want. Uh, we will respond uh, maybe today or tomorrow. It's our pleasure again to have you with us. Our full Sunday schedule, regular Sunday schedule is uh, 8.30 worship uh, in this traditional style, maybe uh, uh, without all the formality on other Sundays, we pulled out all the stops for today. And then at 11, our uh, contemporary worship, still liturgical, following the basic flow of our liturgy, but with our wonderful musicians leading us. Every Sunday, we've got uh, classes for children and adults. We get started around 9.45 and then officially at 10. Uh, please join us. Uh, not today. We've got other things today. Indeed, uh, afterwards, stick around for breakfast uh, served immediately. And then at 9.45, we'll have an Easter egg hunt for little ones. And right after that, uh, uh, a butterfly release. Both of them sharing uh, the gospel of Jesus risen from the dead, especially with our neighbors who may not come to our worship or Bible study, but will come for that. Again, thank you for joining us today. Let me check my list. We also afterwards have someone to pray with you if you want here at the communion rail. If you are a newcomer and, and you're not instructed about the meal, we want you to feel part of this family. You can come forward and cross your arms for a baptism blessing at the rail. And we look forward to you joining us soon. The class we teach on Sunday mornings is the newcomer class, but all our members are going through it. Uh, the fundamentals, it is called. It's uh, uh, described on the back of the insert in today's bulletin. Please read it if you're not aware of it. Also note the front. Next week, we start an Easter sermon series. I get to be with you longer. So a series on our continuous epistle during the Easter season from 1 Peter I will say almost every week, if, if someone is new to the faith, the best book of the Bible, maybe the Gospel of John, and maybe Ephesians, but I would list right with them, First Peter. And the title uh, plays off his name, Gems from the Rock. But it also means something else. Join us, please, next week. A couple of liturgical notes. Uh, we will start the offertory as the offering is brought forward. It doesn't indicate that uh, before the prayer of the church. And uh, we do have a hymn to sing during communion. Uh, feel free to bring your hymnal forward or sing at the rail, respective of, of those around you. And uh, we will not recess the cross going out so that you can face the screens and see the lyrics of the final hymn. We share our offering.
please stand and sing, What Shall I Render? on Wednesdays in the Lent worship series, Places of the Passion, was Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Indeed, as the lyrics say, onward in Christ's footsteps treading, pilgrims hear our home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do the Father's bidding. And so we pray. Living Lord Jesus, on the first day of the week, the stone was rolled away from the tomb and life opened for all who trust. And your atoning, redeeming, resurrecting work, roll away the stones of fear in our lives and let us live boldly for you. Lord Jesus, replace our fear with courageous faith, a faith that looks at challenges and pain and setbacks and heartaches with your strength, giving everything into your powerful and gracious hands. Lord Jesus, release us from prisons of fear that we might be free. Set free all who live in bondage to anxiety, who are chained to addiction, who are enslaved to evil. Lord Jesus, you minister to the sick and suffering with your mercy. We pray for your healing for all the sick, the wounded, the grieving. Give strength to the dying, O Lord. We hold before you all on our prayer list and those in our hearts. Lord Jesus, you set your table before us on this highest of feasts. It is the remembrance of a Passover fulfilled and the anticipation of the heavenly banquet in your presence. May we commune with true repentance and trust in you, true unity and concord in our teachings and life together, true expectation that our lives of sin are changed by your spirit. Work in our hearts that all may eat and drink your true body and blood for the benefit of their bodies and souls and to show forth love for you and all people. Lord Jesus, you bid us go forth with confident Easter faith and an endless hallelujah. We do that in the power of your spirit and as witnesses to the world, each of us prays and lives. Jesus, let me faithful be life eternal grant to me. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Give thanks to the Lord our God. truly good 
right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially, are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... <laughs> are you Lord of heaven and earth for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our savior with repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thank the Lord and sing his praise. fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Stay standing even through the beautiful long prelude for our final hymn. 